uh, for New York and sending a message to the nation. Welcome to this week's edition of New York Now. I'm Dan Clark. Last week, we opened the show with news about the civil unrest in Rochester over the death of Daniel Prude, an unarmed black man who died after an interaction with police. And more happened this week. Protesters occupied Rochester City Hall, but were forced out by the police hours later. And there were some tense moments. Take a look at this video from our PBS affiliate in Rochester. All we did was just occupy this. And all you wanted was for us to clear the entrances and the parking, which you have fully done. And yet you are still here in this full ground, ready Department. to detain us all. Who are you guys arrest the killers that killed Daniel Kruger? Yeah. That is why we're here. Let's take care of it. Are you, are you, are you willing, willing, willing to do it? John Campbell from the USA Today Network has been following the situation closely. He's with me now in studio. John, thanks for being here. Hey, thank you for having me, Dan. So the protesters occupied City Hall this week, as we said before. What are they looking for at this point? Because the police chief resigned and then was subsequently fired by the mayor this week. It's kind of a weird situation. What are the demands, I guess? Well, they have they have four main demands, and one they're looking for, they're looking for resignations. They were looking for the resignation of the police chief. They got that resignation, but the Laurent Singletary, the police chief, is going to step down at the end of the month. Uh, now, they're, the city hall, you know, there's been a lot of interest in this case, a lot of uh, freedom of information requests filed. City hall, the mayor, lovely Warren, uh, proactively released some of those documents, some of which showing uh, the police chief and a, a, a deputy uh, discussing how they, they wanted to be really careful with the release of the video of Daniel Prude's death uh, because they feared that it could incite a response like we saw with George Floyd that we've seen with other uh, similar police, uh, police killings in, in over the years. So, uh, they're, you know, they're looked to be something of a cover-up here. And now there's this big debate about who deserves blame for that. So the mayor sped up the, uh, the resignation of the, uh, the police chief, fired him two weeks early, essentially. And uh, now we're in a situation where there's questions about how much responsibility the mayor deserves, how much responsibility state officials, local, local officials. I mean, there's a lot of people who knew about this and did not tell the public. How is the mayor reacting to all of this? Because she is relatively popular in Rochester, I think, but the, I believe the protesters were calling for her to resign herself, right? We, we, you know, we as journalists often use the word embattled to yeah. describe a politician, and I think it's certainly apt in this case, not only because, uh, you know, there are serious questions about what she knew and when she knew it. There was one email that she released where there was a, a reference to the mayor being, quote unquote, in the loop. Mm. Uh, you know, she has denied that she, she knew that it was, she, she has said that it, at one point the, the police chief told her it was an overdose rather than, uh, you know, a death as the result of asphyxiation because police officers put pressure on uh, Daniel Prude's head. Uh, so she is certainly embattled not only for that, but also she's under investigation. Her campaign is under investigation for uh, campaign finance related issues with right. the, the State Board of Elections. Uh, independent investigator investigated that, referred it to the Monroe County District Attorney, uh, and there's going to be a grand jury impaneled for that soon. So uh, she, when you say the word embattled, in this case, it is, is truly, truly apt. So speaking of grand juries, the attorney general a few weeks ago said that she was impaneling a grand jury herself in the Daniel Prude investigation. As we explained on last week's show, that means that she is considering criminal charges. Yeah. Um, what does that look like? Do we know a timeline on that? I know the thing about grand juries in New York is that they're shrouded in secrecy. Shrouded in secrecy and also very backed up right now because of COVID-19. That's know? a really great point. Was, I didn't consider that. Yeah, so there's, there is a, a backlog of... of uh, grand jury cases, which could come into play here. Um, that being said, you know, the attorney general did take the kind of the extraordinary step, one that she might not usually take, uh, but given the, the public interest here, you know, she did announce that she will impanel a grand jury. That means they'll bring evidence to the grand jury and determine whether there's probable cause to uh, indict someone in this case. Likely, they're looking at the officers. So what do the police look like right now in Rochester? We know that last week uh, the, the police chief announced his resignation. Mm -hmm. Some of the command staff as well decided to leave the department. 
um, what what does the police department look like right now? Is is it a mood that it's police versus protesters? Right. Well, there's I mean, there's no doubt. Literally, every single night you see police versus protesters. Right. I mean, you see these lineups in Rochester where. Uh, you know, they'll, they stand up face to face, you know, a few feet away. That's what happened with the occupation of City Hall. Uh, that's how they, they ended up clearing it out. But that being said, you know, you have not seen the, the rioting and looting uh, in Rochester that you have seen in, in other places, in Minneapolis with George Floyd, for example. And, and that, is, that is certainly something to be recognized, that, you know, these protesters do have a very clear, consistent message in terms of their demands. Uh, and they have not resorted to the, the rioting and looting that has been criticized in other, other cities. All right. Well, we are watching the situation as it continues to develop in Rochester. John Campbell from the USA Today Network, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me.